Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. So the question that we'll be solving today is merge intervals. But before starting this particular question, I would like to address something. I have seen that many of you just come and watch the video and don't subscribe. So please do consider subscribing the video, uh, subscribing my channel as well. So now let's start with this particular question. So we are given a set of non overlapping intervals. So this thing is really important non overlapping intervals. Okay. Insert a new interval into the intervals merge if necessary. Okay. So we have been given uh, non overlapping intervals and then we get an interval which we have to put in inside it. Okay. So now this question uh, actually is not directly of type array. Okay, uh, you could say like we will be using something called as a greedy approach over here. Okay, so what do I mean by greedy approach? Like we will be trying out different ways and with the help of that, we'll be coming on to our solution. Now, before uh, starting this particular question, I would like to just like address something. So over here, we have been given a structure. Okay, and for those of you who don't know how to like get elements or access the elements inside a structure, it's really easy. Assume your structure interval right now to be something like int. Okay, suppose if I have created int a, then I can assign it some value for and later on I can call a right if I want to see out I will just say that c out a right and it will print this a for me so now similarly if you have created a structure right so that means you have assigned two values inside it so one value would be your start and the other value would, would be your end okay so now if I want to like call the start value it's simple all I have to do is first let's create an instance for interval so interval okay and let's say it's a Okay, so and some values assigned to it for now you can assume that so now if I want to call the starting value of a all I have to do is I have to write a dot start Okay, and this will give me the starting value of a if I write a dot end It will give me the ending value of a. Okay, so this is so simple now coming to the question So over here what things are being passed to us? So we have been passed an interval Okay, and we have been passed a new interval. Okay, so a pointer interval means like basically an array would be there Okay, let me just change it to C++ so that you can see the vector style. Yeah, so we have been given a vector over here vector of intervals. Okay, and then you have a new interval. Now same thing will happen over there like in C++ as well. Okay, C and C++ are closely related. So same thing we have to do uh, like we have to say dot start and the start will be there. Okay, so now uh, let's uh, discuss the cases that we have inside this question. Okay. So the question is really easy. So first thing is we have to get the starting value of the new interval and the ending value of the new interval. Okay. So in this question, it is particularly not mentioned that the first like the interval thing that we get right. So in start, we have the start value and in end, we have the end value. So we have to make sure that we have the smallest value in start and the highest value in end for a particular new interval that is being given to us. Okay. So what I can do is I can say int s is equal to uh, minimum of okay so now I will be address like accessing my start and end values so the name of this particular uh, thing that I have is new interval right so I will say new interval dot start okay comma new interval dot end got it similarly I have to find the highest value and I will be storing that inside my end variable or you can say e variable so I have kept E and I will just make it max. So now my uh, S and E holds the minimum and the maximum value. So right now I know that uh, S is the start point and E is the ending point of the new interval that I have. So now coming back to the cases. Okay. So now we will have four cases. Okay. So just listen to me uh, carefully. After this, I will be like explaining why exactly I have not taken that particular case, which you might think over here. Okay. So the first case is if our new number so assume this white line this is our previous interval okay the previous interval that we had and the orange one is the new interval that we got so now if my new interval is getting merged inside my previous interval right so if this is the case what exactly should i do uh, what i will do i will uh, like i will not be adding this particular stuff right but then in the same scenario i have to update my e and s as well okay so Let's do one thing. We will be we have to return a vector, right? So let's say int n is equal to 
my interval that I have. Okay, so that is uh, let's just say this interval to be as it. Okay, so that it's easy for me to write. So it's it dot size done. Okay, so we have now the size of it uh, it inside n, and we have to create a vector. Okay, so vector of interval. So that's why I will write interval. Interval is a structure over there, right? So vector of ints. Like if we want to create vector of ints, we'll write vector, and inside the stack part, we write int, right? Same way we will be writing interval over here. And let's say this is v. Okay, so now I have vectors of interval. Uh, I have a vector v, uh, which is of type interval. So now I will just iterate throughout my loop, like throughout the uh, array that is given to me. Okay, that is it. And I will be checking uh, that do, does this particular uh, S and E falls for any of the these cases. Okay. So the first case that I found over here was that if my S is less than equal to IT of I dot start. Okay. So it is less than the start point. Okay. And no, no, not less than the start point. Uh, it is less than the end point. Okay. Uh, yes. So it was inside it, right? So if S is less than the end point. Okay. And and my s is greater than equal to it of i dot start right yeah so see uh, let's just confirm so this is end this is start so this start like this the start that we have should be less than equal to and the end that we have is should be greater than equal to so the end that we have is greater than equal to and the start that we have is less than equal to correct okay so if this is the scenario what exactly should i do so i will just say that my e is equal to max of okay so my e will be max of either of it okay so it of i dot end uh comma e so whatever is maximum okay so if that particular line extends this okay so if this particular line is something like this okay then uh, then also that case is covered okay so i will just say that my new e that i had was this one the maximum one so right now my s will hold the smallest value and e will hold the highest value in like including these two intervals okay so now i have my s is equal to it of i dot start uh, why did i write this thing because obviously you can see the condition is that that your it of i dot start should be less than equal to this Okay, so with this, I am uh, done with the first case. Now moving on to the second case that I have, right? So you only think, what can be the second case? The second case can be something like this, okay? So right now we covered this and this scenario, right? This one and this scenario. So now we have to cover the scenario for the right hand side, uh, sorry, left hand side as well, okay? The starting value of the new interval is less than the starting value of our previous interval and the ending value is like of our previous interval is greater than or equal to the starting value of uh, our previous int uh, or of the interval that is given to us, okay? So it looks something like this, okay? So if you just see this figure, you will be able to understand this stuff. So now uh, I have to just like write some more uh, else if conditions, okay? So else if. Uh, I'll say if, if my s is less than uh, i t of i dot start, okay. So it my s is less than i t uh, of i dot start. Yeah, that's the case. And and what is the next point that I said? That was my e should be greater than equal to i t of i dot start. Okay. Then only like I can say that I have to merge this stuff, right? Because if that's not the case, then this line is not even touching the previous uh, interval that I, or the interval that I have right now. So that's why I've written this. Now, all I have to do is I have to just check that I have to just make sure that E holds the value of max. Okay. Like it can end before the previous interval and even after the previous interval, right? So that's why I am just storing the highest value inside it. So now these two cases are done, right? Now uh, the case will come where I have to push the values of ENS inside my intervals. Okay, so else if now when I will be pushing my values basically. So if my S is like if the start that I have right S that I have is less than my IT of I dot start. Okay, and and the end value that I also have right so end value that I have that is also less than my IT of I dot start. So now what does this mean? 
so this basically means that these two are not connected at all this is something else okay so that means like right now i have to just get in my e and s inside the vector that i have created because rest of the intervals that i have after it are basically separate intervals okay and they are like the merging part has already been done somewhere or the other okay so you have to assume that there might be some line previous to this suppose there was something like this over here and it already got merged and now i have ens value okay so now what i will do i will just uh, push them back okay so i have to do v dot push back okay so i have just i have to just get this intervals inside it so interval bracket s comma e those of you who might be thinking like what exactly i have written over here so this interval is basically a constructor you can see about it over here so they have said that if you write interval of s comma e like this so the start value will be s and the end value will be e okay so this is pretty much simple it like it's same like int a is equal to one like that okay so those of you who are facing difficulty on this they can like just read about a little bit like just read about structures what exactly they are and you will be like good to go with this question now over here uh, i have to also update my s and e right so i will say that my s is now it of i dot star that is of the new line okay and my e is equal to it of i dot end that is of the new interval or the new line that I got, right? Now there is one more condition. What if this thing doesn't happen? Okay, and they are on the right hand side. So if they are on the right hand side, that means that will come inside the else part. Okay. Uh no, wait. Else if else it of i dot start. Yes. So that will come uh in the okay, no. I have to like we I can put it in the else part as well, or else I can like just to be sure I can put an else if over here and say that s is greater than it of i uh, dot n. Okay, so if that's the case, that means my new line or the new interval was exactly after it. Okay, so you guys can't see me. Okay, uh, so this is the stuff. So over here you have so this new interval is after this previous one. So there's no need of comparison and everything, right? We have to just push back s and e inside it right so not s and e i have to just push back the normal interval that i have so what i will do is i will just say v dot push back okay it of i whatever interval that i am right now on so this is it okay so this was it this is uh, the end part and in the end what i will be doing is in case like uh, like in case it were like my new s and e are the last element okay and like suppose let me just draw it for you so you can say that i had mm, yep so i had a white like first interval second interval third fourth fifth like this and in the end i had the new interval so that means i have to add this as well right even if it is not merging then also so i will be just doing that now so what i will do is i will just say that v dot push back the interval that is s comma e okay double s comma e that's it and i will be returning my vector v so that's it let's just test it once yeah so it's working let's submit it and check does it pass all the test cases yep so we did it correctly okay uh, so the main logic was that you have to like follow a particular approach for this okay you have to just have a s and an e and you will be storing your next s and e continuously inside it okay so in the end over here like i will just show this thing so for those of you uh, who would like to like try writing the code on your own okay after listening to the explanation you can just have this thing you can have a pick of it and later on you can try doing it on your own got it so this was it for today uh, i hope you guys like the solution and in case you did okay so please drop a like and subscribe to my channel and those of you who are new and I obviously i knew like more than half of you guys will be new because right now i'm gaining subscribers so please try to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon thank you